right. So our next speaker is uh, Pablos Firoedas. Pablos is professor of classics at Middlebury College, Vermont. He has published a number of articles on several Greek poets, including Aristophanes, Euripides, Sophocles, and Pindar. His forthcoming book, The Feast of Poetry, Sacrifice, and Performance in Aristophanic Comedy, combines his interests in poetic genres and uh, ritual performance. Today's lightning talk, entitled Bearing a Burden, Pericles and Aristophanes' Frogs is part of a book-length project on Aristophanes' Frogs. Please welcome Pavlos to the podium. Thank you, Zoe. Um, I also had a PowerPoint um, uh, which essentially replicates the handout, and I thought it would be burdensome to um, um, and too much of a coordination to manage at this point. So you will have to um, um, do with um, um, the handout. Um, um, Aristophanes Frogs opens in a weighty manner. Um, Dionysus slave Xanthias keeps trying to tell jokes that link the pressure of bowel movements with the weight of luggage um, on his shoulders. Yet even the very fact of carrying is questioned by Dionysus, who points out that the burden cannot be said to be borne by Xanthias since it is carried by the donkey carrying Xanthias. The implied paradox of a weight carried by both slave and donkey, and therefore redoubled, stumps Xanthias, who cannot answer, yet he knows that he bears the luggage weightily, um, that is, with difficulty. Um, the broken verse 26, um, with its antilabe on handout number one, zooms in on the expression bareos fero, which holds the key, as it blurs the boundary between the literal carrying the weight and the metaphorical bearing a misfortune. This wordplay, with its fusion of literal and metaphorical burdens, is crucial, especially if we consider the history of the phrases bareos fero sum foras fero and the like. Such expressions are not as established as their later ubiquity might lead us to assume. Indeed, um, they turn out to be fairly novel. Um, they occur extremely rarely before the middle of the fifth century, even if we broaden our scope as much as possible to include all metaphorical uses of ferrein um, in the sense to endure um, without an adverb or a modal word. We find only two in the whole of Epic, um, two and three on the handout, a couple in Theognis, number four, three in Pindar, and five, and four in Aeschylus, um, although the two in Agamemnon are very close to the literal, um, and we can talk about um, more about that if you wish. Um, after that, um, um, these expressions proliferate. Um, more intriguingly, if we um, narrow the sample to what we find in frogs, i.e. bareos fero, with some synonyms and antonyms for good measure, um, no use can be securely dated before 440 um, at the earliest. Um, briefly, um, bareos fero first appears in Herodotus, um, number eight, then returns in Aristoph Aristophanic comedy, um, number nine. The semantic cognate um, Haleposfero starts occurring in the late uh, 5th century, first and mostly in Thucydides, um, number 10, um, who also uses Sumphoras Fero. As his book two passages deal with the psychological effects of the Periclean plan to abandon the Attic countryside early in the war, it is possible that this trope became current with Pericles and that it was a familiar marker of his rhetoric, possibly of the discourse against his plan. Um, further, the use of um, sumphoras fero, sumphoran or sumphoras ferein in Plato's Menexenus, um, number 12, would also inscribe the idiom within the rhetorical tradition of the funeral oration. Socrates' speech is said to be indebted to Pericles Epitaphius, yet it has little in common with the Thucydidean version, its antithesis in many respects. 
If we keep in mind that the phrase is often used by Euripides in the 430s, um, number 11, we might even pinpoint the occasion of its birth. Pericles' funeral speech after the Samian War in 439. That would dovetail nicely with the anachronistic attribution of the Menexenus speech to Aspasia of Miletus, and with the infamous role she was suspected of playing in the Athenian intervention in that conflict. But there's more to the Periclean pedigree of these phrases. Pericles' speech um, to quell Athenian resentment in Thucydides 260 um, is especially relevant as it features a kind of redoubling similar to that suggested by the comic Dionysus. A citizen is said to be upheld, Pheromenos, by a sailing police, which is able to carry the weight of that citizen's private misfortunes. Uh, um, in number 10, polis das idias xumphoras hoia te ferein. The same burden appears therefore to be borne twice, both by the citizen and by the police. We can imagine how a clever poet would run with a comic, even absurdist uh, potential of that concept. To be sure, although Pericles may have popularized the trope by intensifying the civic and figurative aspects of carrying burdens, he did not create it ex nihilo. Um, we may indeed um, discern its seeds in Aeschylus, uh, for example, in Persians, um, and the corrigus for that uh, production was none other than a young Pericles. And herein lie the possibilities for um, our reading of frogs. Aeschylus' eventual victory expresses a latent desire for a return to the Periclean past, as is suggested by Aeschylus' civic advice following immediately upon the weighing of verses, which, like the play's opening, fuses literal and metaphorical burdens. One part of Aeschylus' proposal consists in the Periclean strategy of leaving Attica exposed to Spartan raids and relying on the fleet, however that might be applied in 405. The other part uses the Orestia image of a dangerous lion cub to correlate the recall of Alcibiades with Herodotus' story of Pericles' birth in Book VI. Thus, Dionysus' choice of Aeschylus is a deliberately subtle, um, uh, even perhaps tongue-in-cheek um, uh, en endorsement of Periclean policies. But this goes beyond a mere political statement that would hinge on the thorny politics of Aeschylean tragedy and the relationship between Pericles and the real Aeschylus, um, as that is perceived, might be perceived by Aristophanes. By conjuring up the Periclean aura, Aristophanes, born in the 440s, invests that political message with a wistful recollection of his own childhood. Let me then um, sum up um, this lightning talk. Um, we've detected one more intertextual layer in the rich opening of frogs. We may have excavated a small but productive trope of the elusive though influential Samian Epitaphius. Um, we've heard fittingly Pericles posthumous thunder and lightning loud and clear. And last but not least, we have felt the biographical poignancy of the poet's nostalgia for his youth. Thank you very much. Questions, comments? Um, so thank you very much. I wonder if you could, uh, if we are, if you think we have, we are to make something out along these lines from what Eskilus Eskilus asks Dionysus about the quality of the people in charge, right? Right before, if I remember correctly, right before he gives the advice that resonates with Peripian policy. And I wonder 
whether we can weave that part into your argument, if that is meant to, in other words, already prime the audience into thinking about the quality of their current leaders, or even, you know, I don't know if you want to go as far as say, think about Thucydides' own like, uh, note about uh, Heracles and his successor, but I wonder, I wonder what you think about Possibly. Um, uh, I don't want to create a political allegory uh, because I don't think we have, um, we have that. Um, but um, uh, once you start looking, you can um, um, see um, echoes um, of, um, of Pericles. Um, I think um, an important one is actually Dionysus um, um, uh, formulation of and reconceptualization of his mission um, um, to um, bring a poet so that the city is saved so that it can stage um, its choruses. Um, and so festivals have a civic function um, um, which actually to me um, is reminiscent of um, Pericles' own conceptualization of the civic function of festivals in 238. Um, um, in other words, that if you remember, they are festivals um, um, and other um, pleasures are intended to drive away Tolupeiron, um, sorrow, right, um, grief, um, and that is precisely um, a prerequisite for um, uh, wise and prudent political decisions. Um, uh, and um, um, in, in other words, um, um, uh, there is, I think, um, quite a bit that goes back to the Periclean um, um, era um, and Periclean rhetoric um, but it's a different question and a difficult question how really seriously we are meant to take that. Yes, mm please. -hmm. If I remember correctly, and I might be stretching a bit here, um, this whole luggage carrying scenario ends with a corpse coming through frogs and uh, Xanthos trying to push off the luggage onto the corpse who is willing to carry it, but for a very high price. Is it possible that there's maybe a little bit of message here that if, we keep, if, if keep, things keep going in Athens the way they have been, the only people left to carry this to fit on are all going to be corpses? <laughs> yeah. Possibly, absolutely. Um, something, actually, something else um, that um, uh, I um, found interesting as I was thinking about this um, was that um, one of the very, very few um, um, known um, elements in Pericles um, um, Samos um, Epitaphios um, is um, the conceit that he um, compared um, the war dead to um, immortals. Um, and the analogy is that um, as we um, don't see the immortal gods, but we infer their presence from um, the honors that we give them um, and um, the benefits that they um, um, offer us. So it is with the war dead. Um, what made, um, um, what intrigued me um, in that um, was in part that um, it seems to um, really blur the boundaries in a way between um, um, actual human dead people, corpses, um, and, um, and gods. Um, um, and this is really what th th the premise um, that underlies the the frogs as a um, as a whole. Um, and in fact, um, 
I mean, uh, there are um, connections to Plato's Menexenus um, in that respect, but um, I'll stop here. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. 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 Um, in a in a way, um, um, what you have in the um, in the opening is really um, a very comic um, 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 foreshadowing, right, of the weighing that we'll have later, um, and. Um, uh, the weighing cost contest is won um, unquestionably by um, Aeschylus, but that doesn't seem to be enough um, for Dionysus. And then it is at that point that he reformulates. And so um, the sequencing of these, you know, the weighing contest and the civic advice um, seem to me um, important in uh, bringing up what I think might be an er a Periclean echo in the beginning to the end and then um, usher into the civic advice that really even um, to the ancient scholiasts um, recalled Pericles. A typically silly uh, intervention, um, okay, is that I've always found it quite entertaining that he has all this luggage in the first place because it's not used, they don't stay overnight. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is clearly a paw box, but I mean, do you have any thoughts about the business of dragging this, uh, this weight in at the beginning? Surely, in order to have this series of jokes about. Yeah, um, uh, I think it really um, reinforces my point that um, that um, um, the um, purposelessness of this, right, apart from the comic potential, is really intended to make us think, you know, qu wonder why it's there. And um, and um, um, th that's partly what sparked my questioning about it. Why is it there? Um, and um, and I thought that um, um, the um, metaphorical ways in which Pericles thinks about burdens in a civic context context um, um, really um, makes makes sense. Um, uh, in an analogous fashion, um, I really wonder what the purpose of um, um, Aeschylus giving the um, Periclean advice in the beginning of the Peloponnesian War um, um, might be. Um, and because of it, um, you may want to really... Um, Twist it to make it fit 405, but really it doesn't. Um, and so to me, it seems that the only reason why it's there is really to evoke um, um, the 430s, um, as it were. Suggestion, why don't you just carry the donkey? Uh, so, why don't you carry? Uh, the suggestion that. Uh, oh, that yeah, yeah. Gives, uh, right, uh, right. At the end, why don't you try to carry the donkey then? Um, does echo again this idea that no individual can possibly shoulder oh. the burden of the entire province? Uh, so, <laughs> we have the expression. If you really push the analogy there, it really gets funny. Right, um, because okay, Xanthias is the private individual, right, who complains about his own private suffering, right? Um, then the donkey is the police. Um, um, the um, and of course, uh, this does not really um, um, hinge 
on staging, but different versions of how we might understand how this was staged um, could emphasize different aspects and play uh, play up with different aspects of um, of this um, of this analogy. I mean, it would be. Um, for example, one thing to have um, um, Xanthias um, um, carried by um, a mute extra or two mute extras impersonating a donkey and um, 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 expressing the way that they feel. It would be another thing to have um, 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 Xanthias um, holding, in addition to the luggage, um, holding some kind of um, um, like a, um, a broomstick, um, which then would mean that he would be hold, carrying both the luggage and the donkey um, at the at the same time. So um, um, there are different possibilities here. Um, um, the um, the other thing, of course, is that usually. Um, um, in in um, um, Thucydides 260, um, the um, 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 ship of state metaphor um, is not really explicit. Um, uh, you can um, um, read it um, within that trope if you connect it with um, other texts like Creon in Sophocles Antigone, for um, for example, uh, but usually um, that trope actually brings up the ship of state metaphor, which actually is completely different from a donkey. But um, the ship of state metaphor somehow is relevant to the beginning of frogs, of, of frogs, because in fact the. Um, 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 subtext is um, the naval battle of Arginusari. Okay. Okay, any more comments or questions? Let's uh, thank Paul for his question.